So, you know, people usually buy things like this and they're kind of expensive. You know, they have a little money, but it, it, it doesn't really matter in that sense of how financially well off they are. He was fraudulently ripping people off with merchandise that wasn't even from games. So this is what we have with this particular story. Number one, the media is not really covering it. Number two, um, it's an NFL branded type of deal. So this is something that the NFL could look at and be like, you know, uh, maybe this is a uh, suspension worthy or something to look into. But he's allegedly ripping off fans by selling them like saying, OK, this is the uh, jersey or helmet from Super Bowl such and such or this particular game against this team. We broke this record that this is that jersey. This is that helmet. And it has found to been uh, fraudulent. And when I first heard about this, number one, I was surprised because it didn't really make the news. It didn't really get talked about a lot. And number two, when I said I was surprised, I'm going to turn right back around and say it wasn't surprising when I consider his last name. Now, what I mean by that? The Mannings. Hmm. The Mannings. And, okay, you know what? Let me, and, and before I even do all that, man, let's just dive into what this is exactly. And the thing about it is, is that... um. He's responsible for this because his name is on it, his brand. Let's just think about anything. If you're uh, involved with anything, if you own a business and that business rips, rips people off, they're going to look at you as your business. He's responsible, just like um, the drug use or PED use. If you end up with that in your body, they say you're responsible for it. You know, you can't say, I didn't know if it's in your body. It's on you. It's, you know, saying your deal. It's in your body. So it's completely and totally on you. Now, if that is the case. How is he not responsible for his business and or his sales of his particular brand and equipment when it goes out to his fans? You really have to be on top of that because that's your name. That's your legacy. Not to mention the fact, motherfucker, you rich. Motherfucker. You got bread. You were born with fucking bread. Motherfucker. What are you doing ripping off the fucking common man? Motherfucker. Do you know how much money that motherfucker's made since he's been in damn New York? Motherfucker. How the fuck are you fraudulently selling people false jerseys? Did I mention that a trainer said Eli asked him to get him two or three helmets that looked like they had been used in games? Motherfucker. What was that for? What was that for? Why are they not talking about this? Why is it being minimalized? Why are they only showing good sides of it? Uh, the uh, person that purchased the, purchased the merchandise is saying they want to give Eli Manning the benefit of a doubt. What about the other ones that don't? Why is it always positive? Just looking back at him. Now, why, why I say his name is relevant and his family and his upbringing? Because that kind of dictates your behavior. His brother in college set his dick and nuts on a trainer's face. And said he was trying to moon another player and it accidentally happened. Think about the motion of mooning and that and tell me if it makes sense. Paid her off, not once, but twice. But before paying her off, and eventually she had to quit her job because it just became too much. He attempted to ruin her name. How? His father. First and foremost, the coaches were like, just blame it on any black player. Ain't that a bitch? Motherfucker. That's what they told her to do. She wouldn't do it. Archie started spreading rumors about her being loose. You understand what I'm saying? She had sex with players. She would flirt with them, this and that. They started trying to destroy her character. Where does that sound familiar? The victim is being demonized. Hmm, where do they do that at? Oh, every time a ninja gets killed by the fucking police. Motherfucker. Apparently that's their makeup, their background, their mentality. I need to make her look as bad as possible. And let me specify. They said she was sleeping with black players. Everybody caught that, right? Black players. They specifically, specifically said black players. Why? To create more of an uproar, to make people upset. They know that the powers that be will be way more upset with that than they would if she just so happened to get in a quote unquote relationship with a player that happened to be a colonizer. No, she allegedly slept with a lot of black players in order to discredit her and to let his son slide with what he did. Paid her off twice and the entire time still talking noise about her. Saying that she went around in the dorm rooms and visited players. Mostly black players and stayed in the room for a while. Saying things like this to a reporter. That's what they come from. You're raised by your parents and their quote unquote character and their upbringing and their sense of how you should be in life. That's how he is. When things go wrong, blame a ninja. 
Motherfucker. If you want to discredit that woman, say she slept with ninjas. Motherfucker. If you set your dick and nuts on a trainer's face, let's just say a ninja did it. Motherfucker. And with the woman who, by all accounts, just did her job and was good at it, she eventually had to quit and had to quit amongst rumors that every time she went to go see a black player in the dorm or um, in the uh, training room and they had some type of injury, she was being accused of sounding like this. Is it uh, true what they say about the way you people are gifted? Oh, it's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. And that's jacked up that she had to go through that, but it's even more jacked up that that's the standard to say that somebody is lesser than or unworthy or uh, somehow um, they've been smeared or tainted. The way to do that is to say she slept with a bunch of ninjas. Ain't that a bitch? Motherfucker. My only thing is that dude is obviously a narcissist. He did that and college got away with it in uh, pros, did his little HGH, did his little cheating. When Eli came out, uh, his father made sure he didn't go to San Diego. He wanted him in New York. They're used to getting their way and doing their own thing. Why would I not think that Eli could think he could get away with fucking selling false merchandise? Motherfucker. His brother got away with sending his dick and nuts on the trainer's face. Motherfucker. Nobody gives a shit. He's going to the Hall of Fame. First ballot. Accusing his father accused the woman that he did it to a sleeping with multiple black players to make her look bad. Motherfucker. So Eli, in comparison to them, is a fucking golden boy. All he did was sell fake merchandise. He's a damn angel. He's probably the better of the sons. So hell, I guess I'm kind of not mad at him. He managed not to throw out any racist quotes out loud. So maybe the crime is diminishing in the Manning family. Maybe the lack of integrity is diminishing a little bit. But I think the Manning name, as much as it is related and uh, mentioned in concert with great quarterback play and a great sports family and a great family period, which is questionable. Motherfucker. You should also mention it with blatant racist ass statements, sexual assault, and a form of larceny and ripping off your fans when, again, your ass was born with money. Motherfucker. Now, there's absolutely no excuse for that shit, and there's no excuse for the lack of coverage. Eli Manning is a fucking fraud, selling fake merchandise to fans, again, a violation that... When you're one of the guys in the NFL, you're the guy, you're one of the top quarterbacks, you don't won Super Bowls, they heist you up high. Oh, God, both of the Mannings won a Super Bowl. Eli and Payton, what a great story. You know, Archie, their father, played at Ole Miss when there were no ninjas around, so, you know, he was really good. So, I mean, you know, you got that type of thing working, and he's that guy, you promote him, but in this sense, it's detrimental because your guy's ripping off the common fan. The fucking greed that ruins this country. That's the reason why medicine is so high. That's the reason why... The volleyball place we went to and played this past weekend, the biggest facility in the Southeast is huge. They're having a hard time keeping up with it because the lawmakers are purposely putting taxes on them to get rid of it because they want to sell it to somebody else because they're willing to pay more money. When they're already making a grip, man, fucking greed. That's what's wrong with the world now. And obviously he was raised in that type of culture. Just greedy, man. There's no other way to say it. Just greedy. And if you allow somebody to allegedly run your business and do this on your own, I find that hard to believe, especially when you allegedly ask your trainer for helmets that look like they have been game worn. Game, set, match. You are a Manning. Motherfucker. Piss poor, sir. Piss poor. And it's a damn shame. It's a damn shame uh, that it went in that manner. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, Thorny Switch says, TT, why aren't you taking calls? Oh, I'm sorry. Look, I didn't mention this. Listen, um, the calls on today's show... I'm trying, it's been a little hard for me to get some, but people might not be aware of this. It's not Doug's number, man. I'm sorry. I did not mention that. Complete and total uh, mess up on my part. I didn't mention that. The number actually is 307-31-NINJA. That's actually the number. My, my apologies, man. I, I was tripping on that. If you've been calling Doug's number, you're not going to get an answer. That The number to this particular show, if you want to call in, is 307-31-NINJA. I repeat that one more time, man, because I was slipping. As a matter of fact, I'll put it in the chat. My apologies, man. I completely forgot about that. So that's the reason why if you are calling in that you haven't uh, been able to get it. Oh, that was very funny, uh, funny by the way, calling me TT. You're really not going to let that go, are you? Okay, okay, it's all good. But uh, yeah, the number to the show, 307-31-NINJA. That's why you've probably had a hard time getting in. But that is the number to the show. So uh, I just threw that in the chat room, man, for anybody that might be uh, so initiated. Uh, my apologies for that, man. I completely forgot. 
Just uh, completely forgot, man. My bad. That's my bad. That's my. That's my bad. All right, man. This is the Doug Stewart Show, hosted by your boy, that ninja man. I appreciate everybody listening, man. Thank y'all for rolling with me today. We're going over a few topics. Just got done discussing Eli Manning and his scandal as he rips off fans, and he already has a whole bunch of money. Motherfucker. You sorry bastard, you. Ripping off fans with fake paraphernalia, alleged game paraphernalia that obviously is not that. So, I mean, uh, you know, this is something that should be talked about because... At the end of the day, man, you have this guy and he's supposed to be somebody that represents your brand, your franchise, your league, something you're supposed to be proud of, something that they're really, really, really stringent on when it comes to players and their behavior because they don't want certain things to happen in their league. They don't want a certain image. They're really, really big on that. So it's really curious that they choose to ignore this. And surely nobody who's thinking clearly would try to defend Eli Manning in this situation. Having said all that, this is the Doug Stewart Show hosted by your boy, that ninja. Caller, what's your name, where you're calling from, and what do you want to discuss, sir? This is uh, Big Apple Basket, driving in my truck. <laughs> <laughs> With the applause. All right, Big Apple Basket, what's going on, sir? What do you want to get into, man? Uh, I mean, we'll talk about what you've been talking about for the past um, two and a half hours. Um, I will not be answering any questions about Eli Manning. <laughs> I will not try to defend Eli Manning, or I will not bash Eli Manning. So I did not call to discuss Eli Manning. I have no comment. Okay. Okay. Fine. 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 It's all good, sir. Uh, what's going? Yeah. What, what's going on, sir? Well, I want to talk to you about your basketball. Um. Since you, since you start, start to show up with basketball, I wanted to call while you were talking about basketball. It's now it's kind of late, but I'm going to be real quick with it. Okay. Um, it's some stuff going on in the media that me and you talked about a few years ago. I mean, it's a common theme when you got a team like the Clippers with a black head coach, a black general manager, mm-hmm. and a, a, a black face of the franchise, meaning – Nobody to give credit to, the media always say, break them up if they don't do blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. Now, what's, what's, what's wrong with the tape of the Clippers? The Clippers ain't made the playoffs in 30 years. Mm. The Clippers have not made the playoffs in 30 years. So, Chris Paul has been with the Clippers for the past four years. In the past four years, they made the playoffs. And they won a, a, a couple of series, two or three. Mm-hmm. Right? Yes, sir. What's, what's going on with the Clippers should be applauded. You know what I'm saying? It should be lauded. The media should be saying, Doc Rivers, Chris Paul, doing a great job. Because Chris Paul, he did not make the playoffs with New Orleans. And so he had this little moniker that he can't make his teammates better. But Chris Paul has took his team into the playoffs. In the West. He's not playing in a so-called weak league in the East. Chris Paul has guided his team to the playoffs, and it wasn't for injuries to Chris Paul and Blake you Griffin. The, the Clippers um, would do a whole lot better. So I don't know why the media, I know why they're saying it. I, I know why the media saying break up the Clippers, but a black man should not be calling into any radio show or Typing in any chat, the Clippers need to be broke up. You look at the San Antonio Spurs. You had they three key players over 35 years old: Ginobili, Parker, Duncan. You ain't you not hear that one time somebody say break up the Spurs. What they do? They go and sign um Jamar um Demarcus Aldridge. Well, why you can't say add another piece to the Clippers? I'll wait. Not that ninja. Mm -hmm. Man, you talked about it. They broke up Detroit Pistons with Rasheed, yes, and they sir. broke up Portland mm-hmm. with Rasheed. Yeah. You know why? Because they did not want Portland challenging the Lakers. They did not like Ronzi Wells, Scotty Pippen, Rasheed Wallace in the finals. They wanted Kobe Shaq, so they get the credit to Bill Jackson. Detroit. Mm-hmm. Detroit ruled the East for three years in a row. And they tried to use that Darko Milicic pick against Detroit and um, uh, uh, Dumas as you need to break up the door in um, Pistons. Just imagine if Dumas would have took Carmelo. You know what I mean? That dude, just dude, imagine if, they, if, dude. if Detroit would have took Carmelo. Man, I talked about this so much, man. If Detroit 
would have had.